sampling location. Collecting a water sample for determining the lake water clarity and total phosphorus level of your lake is a simple procedure. It takes longer to explain than to do. The first step is to select a sampling location in the deepest open water area in the middle of your lake, away from islands, docks, or projecting shorelines. The sampling site should remain the same year after year to determine trends in water quality. If you have access to a sonic depth finder or fish finder, use it to help you locate the deepest part of your lake. And since it's important to conduct your water sampling from the same place each year, using a handheld GPS to record your precise location is also a good idea. Lastly, depending on the size of your lake, you may need to increase the number of sampling locations to ensure full coverage. Several lakes in Val d'Aimont are large enough to require four or more sampling sites. Sampling Equipment Taking proper water samples begins with proper preparation. It's wise to keep your samples cold until they arrive at the laboratory for testing, so refrigerated cold packs, commonly called ice packs, are handy for this. As well, you will need a small cooler, a secchi disc and two clothespins, a clean bottle with weights and a rope to collect your water samples, latex or vinyl gloves, three laboratory bottles for each sampling site, a pencil and the laboratory data collection sheet, a notebook and map of your lake, a tape measure, a boat, a personal flotation device or PFD and bailing kit for emergencies, an anchor for your boat, and lastly, for safety reasons, there should always be two people taking water samples. Water clarity. The real value in monitoring your lake water quality becomes obvious over a period of several years. In combination with water sampling and other physic chemical measures of the water, you can also evaluate the atrophy of a lake and the state of its aging. Measures of water clarity, or transparency, are important indicators of the health of your lake and should be carried out at two-week intervals throughout the summer season from June to October. Measuring water clarity happens at the depth where the visibility of your secchi disc disappears and reappears. Once you've reached by boat your usual sampling site, it's important to anchor your boat to stabilize it and keep it in the same place while you are taking the water samples. Your secchi disc should be equipped with weights so it can easily descend straight down into the water. A rope with graduated markers every 10 centimeters or 4 inches will facilitate your water quality readings, but you can achieve the same result by using clothespins. To do this, Lower the secchi disc into the water, making sure the line is straight. Record the depth at which it disappears by attaching one of your clothes pins at the water's surface. That's reading A. Slowly raise the disc and record the depth at which it reappears and attach the second clothes pin. That's reading B. Average the two readings using the formula A plus B divided by 2. The result is your secchi disc or water clarity reading. You can repeat the exercise in order to validate your results. For shallow lakes, it's possible that the secchi disc will touch bottom before disappearing. Note the reading all the same and repeat the exercise once per month. It is possible for water clarity to be affected by suspended sediments or microscopic algae levels. If this is the case, repeat the readings once every two weeks. If the lake bottom is carpeted in aquatic plants, which prevent easy reading of the secchi disc, take note of this either on your lake data collection sheet or in your notebook. Each time you measure the water quality of your lake, 
You should record the date, time, weather conditions, name of your sampling site, water color, and any other relevant observations. For more information or to obtain a sample data collection sheet, please consult the internet address below. Mistakes to avoid while measuring water clarity. First of all, avoid facing the sun when positioning yourself to take the reading. Otherwise, you may have difficulty seeing the Secchi disc against the sun's reflection in the water. Better to take the reading from the shady side of the boat. Avoid wearing sunglasses. They can falsify the accuracy of your water clarity reading. As well, it's best to avoid very windy days, which can cause waves and present challenges in accurate measurements of your readings. As much as possible, try to conduct your water clarity readings at the same time of day each time and during daylight. Total Phosphorus Sampling Total phosphorus is a nutritional element essential to plant and algae growth. We find it in our lakes at varying concentrations. There is a close linkage between phosphorus concentration, the abundance of aquatic plants and algae, and the health of a lake. In eutrophic lakes, which is to say lakes that are at an advanced state of degradation and age, there is generally a higher concentration of phosphorus. For total phosphorus, the sampling must occur at spring turnover, roughly one week or so after ice out, or once the lake thaws. Some will also carry out their total phosphorus sampling during the summer months, and another sampling may be done at the next turnover, that is before the lake freezes in late autumn. Both total phosphorus sampling and water clarity testing are to be done at the same sample site, that is, the place where your lake is deepest. For taking your sample, use a clear glass bottle, such as a thoroughly cleaned wine bottle, and attach some weights to make it sink. A hammer affixed to the glass bottle with either cloth-covered tape or elastic bands works fine. Then, securely tie a rope with graduated markers every 10 centimeters or 4 inches to the hammer. Total phosphorus sampling is to be conducted throughout your lake's euphotic zone or at the maximum depth where light penetration is sufficient to support effective photosynthesis. After determining the Secchi disc depth, measure out to twice this amount of rope and mark it with a clip or not. This is the depth of the euphotic zone, or depth of light penetration, through which your water sample for total phosphorus is collected. For example, if your water clarity reading is 4.2 meters, multiply this by 2 to get the depth of the water column through which your sampling must pass, or 8.4 meters. Mark your rope accordingly and take your sample at the required depth. In shallow lakes, where twice the Secchi disc depth would be deeper than the bottom, the water sample is collected to within one meter above bottom, taking care not to disturb the bottom sediments. You want the bottle to fill with water all the way down and all the way back up. This composite sample will then represent all levels of the lake water in the euphotic zone. Before each sampling and between sample locations, the glass bottle should be rinsed thoroughly three times with lake water. Be sure also to fill in the laboratory data collection sheet and identify your sample bottles. Allow the sample bottle to be lowered as quickly as possible into the measured sampling depth and then raised to the surface. If the bottle is not filled or if it is overflowing before coming back to the surface, empty the bottle and repeat. Adjust your speed or rate of retrieval such that the bottle just fills as it reaches the surface. It's at this stage that you should pull on your vinyl or latex gloves, especially before manipulating your laboratory bottles. 
Open the cap of the first lab bottle, pour in your lake water sample to below the lip, close the bottle and place it immediately in your cooler containing ice packs to keep it refrigerated until transported to the laboratory. Remember that you are to collect three samples per sample site, so repeat this exercise for your two other bottle samples as well. All that's left now is to bring your samples to the lab. Attention! Please be careful to avoid the following mistakes when carrying out your total phosphorus testing. If your sampling bottle has not filled up entirely by the time it reaches the surface of the water after you have sent it all the way down and all the way back up, representing all levels of the lake water in the euphotic zone, either try using a bottle with a smaller neck or add more weights to the bottle so that it descends faster. When taking your samples, be sure to avoid getting disturbed sediment from the bottom of the lake or vegetation from aquatic plants in your sample, even when the lake is shallow or carpeted in aquatic plant life. The water in your sample may appear turbid or cloudy if you stir up the sediment from the bottom of the lake. A cloudy, murky sample may also be attributable to heavy precipitation or high winds so avoid taking samples under such conditions or following a hard rain. Your lab bottles should not be left lying around in the bottom of your boat or in a place where they may come in contact with dust, pollen, mold or mildew. Your lab bottles should only be handled while wearing vinyl or latex gloves. Try not to fill the lab bottles so they overflow. Lastly, ensure your water sample goes directly into the cooler and not onto the bottom of the boat. This video on protocols for measuring water clarity and water sampling for total phosphorus was made to help those interested in carrying out regular monitoring of their lake water. For more information on water sampling protocols, kindly consult the following websites.